All right, welcome back to our live streams. We are gonna be shooting live, testing a bunch of videos, making sure that they get to you, the viewers, in essentially the best way possible. Uh, what we're gonna discuss here in this live video is the fact that we have many clients these days who, who are going to trials, things have been delayed, and they want to know whether they should testify at trial. So getting into that is gonna be the big crux of this video. So if you are watching this video yourself or a loved one's going to trial, thinking about whether the fact that they need to you know, testify themselves, uh, this is gonna be the good video for you to watch and, and see here. So the six factors to consider where they're deciding whether you're going to testify at trial, we're gonna get into each of them individually. I uh, just wanna show you here real quick that obviously the main constitution is out there. It protects you in the sense that you do not have to testify yourself uh, against yourself, uh, especially if it is your own trial. Uh, that is the Fifth Amendment. This is the privilege against self-incrimination. Tons of other laws that we can get into that we won't when it gets into testifying, uh, spouses, so on and so forth. But understand for yourself, the baseline rule at your own trial is that you do not have to testify. You don't have to testify against yourself or for yourself, uh, if you wanna rephrase the way that that goes. Um, and, I, and I'm gonna talk about some of the things that you should consider. Your defense attorney will also you know, usually speak with you about this. I know we do at our firm. If we're getting to the trial and if you are potentially wanting to go to trial and testify, or whether you're going to trial and you don't want to testify, a lot of things that can be uh, factored in here to make sure that you um, obviously protect yourselves and we have the best uh, results possible. Looking into the first factor here, we have the fact that your testimony may bolster, may help your defense, especially especially in situations where we're talking about self-defense, entrapment, saying that you did, did something in good faith. This is great information for you to testify to. It really, really, really helps see your side of the story, see it from your lens of what, what you witnessed. Um, I know in the in the public world here, we've seen many uh, self-defense claims go some the right way and some the wrong way. Uh, part of these factors will cover that. Some of the things that definitely help, especially if you're going to testify, especially um, if you want it to help your testimony, is that you have to have a credible explanation for what you did, why you did. You can't just get up and testify and say whatever you want. It has to be credible. Um, I mean, theoretically, you could say whatever you want, but it may not help you. Uh, if it's credible, if it's, and what I mean by that is if it logically makes sense and if it was truthful and if you can, you know, clearly articulate to the jury what happened, when it happened, why you were doing those certain things, then that could definitely help you. And the last thing that I note here in, in this uh, prong is if you have a criminal record, almost every single day of the week, that's really gonna hurt you when you go to testify. Um, not the purpose of this video to get into the specific rules uh, that the prosecutors, the defense attorneys, the judges have to review here, but understand if you have prior criminal convictions, and I'm not talking about little speeding tickets, but prior criminal convictions, then it, it may hurt you in the long run to testify altogether. Factor number two here, this is a good one for the jury and for you to understand is that the jury in a criminal trial really holds the most weight. They're gonna be deciding the final outcome of your case. This is the part where jurors typically wanna hear from you. Um, understand there's no law that says that the jury has to hear from you, but they're going to want to. It's human nature. The jury has been you know, pulled from the public and said, hey, please judge this person and they're gonna to wanna to hear from that person, that that way they can judge them in maybe the best way possible. Um, thankfully, uh, you don't have to testify, especially if some of these things weigh in the wrong favor, uh, weigh against you. So if uh, you know you do get up to testify, understand that could theoretically help your case. It, it allows the jury to humanize you, to see you for who you are, um, as opposed to just a name, as opposed to you just sitting there at the defense table without actually getting up to defend yourself. Um, understand 
a lot of this weighs into the credibility back uh, back in the first prong is is if your story doesn't make sense and you get up and testify to it, well, then the jury gets to see you and see kind of that you're maybe making something up or trying to stretch the truth much further than you really probably should be. Um, and so that, that way they at least get to see that that could definitely hurt your case, but could definitely absolutely help your case if you meet the first prong and if the jury gets to see you there. Looking at our third prong here, uh, this one goes to the more of the prosecutor. Uh, the prosecutor has the burden of proof. What that means is the prosecutor is the one who needs to show up to trial and they need to essentially prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You as the defendant and even your defense attorneys, we, we theoretically have no responsibility when we are at a trial because it's up to the prosecutor to meet that burden. So how this combines into the fact that you may or may not want to testify is the fact that your testimony could theoretically be used by the prosecutor to help the prosecutor meet their burden. If you testify to certain things that the prosecutor had no evidence of otherwise, well then great, they're gonna now be able to tell the jury, look, Mr. and Mrs. Defendant right there just told you the jury that they did X, Y, and Z. They did one, two, and three. And now that could theoretically help the prosecutor's case. So if you're not going to be able to testify to only good things, and we'll get into this in some of the uh, next prongs here, but if part of your testimony involves incriminating things that you did or things that weren't good, that could ultimately hurt your case and it could allow the prosecutors to get to that high standard that they need uh, in order to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Another thing that we want to talk about here is prong number four. This is going to be your silence, whether it can or can't be used against you. So prong number two is about the jury. Prong number three was about the prosecutor. Prong number four here is more about you. This is basically starting out day one uh, before you get to trial is you need to understand. I mentioned it earlier, though, is if you choose not to testify, which means you can't testify at all at your trial then there's a law that protects you um, and it's supposed to protect you from essentially the jury and from the prosecutor by them not being allowed to assume that because you didn't testify, it means you were guilty. As you see, there's a few different reasons why you may or may not want to testify. People choose all kinds of different reasons. But if the judge was allowed to say, okay, jury, because you know, this defendant didn't testify, you're now allowed to assume, you know, that maybe they did it. That would be hugely unjust against you. Same thing if the prosecutor was allowed to tell the jury in closing arguments is, jury, look, the defendant didn't even testify in their own defense, so they must be guilty. They know they did it, and that's why they didn't testify. Absolutely every day of the week, that would not be allowed. So this law is here to protect you for if you do not want to testify, you don't even have to give a reason why you don't want to testify. The judge has to tell the jury, hey jury, this person is not going to testify in their own defense and you are not allowed to assume any facts, whether good or bad, because they didn't testify. Of course, we're human. Um, the jury is going to basically probably do that internally within their heads. Um, come to their own conclusions, but understand the law is supposed to be there. It's supposed to protect you from that happening, from the jury jumping to that conclusion without actually basing their decision on, on the facts of the case and what happened at trial. Prong number five here is cross-examination, not for the faint of heart. This is very, very important. Um, you have the right, obviously, to not to testify against yourself. However, if you waive that right, if you give up that right and you choose to testify, which means you can get up and you can say your whole side of the story. But the prosecutor is also allowed to then ask you questions about anything you testified about or anything that's relevant in your trial. Let me repeat that. If you get up and testify, the prosecutor is allowed to also get up and ask you questions that you have to answer about anything that was relevant to your case. So this is the fine part of the law where some people say, oh, well, Zach, I totally want to get up. I want to answer, you know, I want to tell the jury what happened in my eyes. 
But I don't want to answer any questions from the prosecutor, no. Well, ultimately, that's not allowed. The judge will not let you testify if you will not open yourself up to being questioned. This means that you essentially can't sit there and say, I don't want to answer that question. I don't want to do this. I don't have to answer that because I got this protection. Well, no, you essentially have to give that up um, in order to testify. And understand that prosecutors are lawyers. They're, they're representing someone that's not you. They're representing the state. And they're going to be tough on you. So it's not going to be easy. It's going to be very tough. It can be stressful. Um, so one of the big things for you to consider when or if you want to testify. Finally, prong number six here is to show that your testimony, if you do choose to testify, is ultimately going to be the biggest thing in your case. Um, and, and I say that, we say that from experience. We say that from things that we see just all the time in, in the media, in, in other you know popular cases that you may hear about. Is, and, and that may be a big factor for you to discuss with your attorney as to whether you want to testify or not, as whether you want all the light shining on you when you might actually have some really good evidence or lack of evidence that helps your case. And you may be able to win your whole case without you ever having to testify. And so you might end up, if you testify, overshadowing some of the other good evidence because of whatever reason, the jury will focus on you and not the fact that there was body cam footage, not the fact that there was other witnesses, not the fact that there was or wasn't you know, DNA evidence. All those other things may be more important for your case. And if you choose to testify and you say something wrong or right, you know, it could theoretically hurt you and ultimately weaken the case uh, against you or weaken the prosecutors or lead to some kind of other thing that may or may not happen. So understand uh, it has its pros, it has its cons. If you're dealing with any of this or a loved one in your, in your family, in your life, uh, about whether they're going to trial and whether they need more help deciding whether they want to testify, definitely always a good thing to converse with your lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer yet, please contact us. We're more than happy to do a free consultation to discuss whether one, you need to go to trial or two, whether you need uh, to testify at that trial. And finally, the last thing I want to say here, which is very important, is the choice of whether you go to trial and you testify at that trial is your choice alone. Your defense attorney, a judge, a prosecutor, nobody can force you to testify and nobody can force you to not testify. Even if it is the worst thing you could do for your case, you still have the right to get up there and testify on your own behalf. You know, whether your defense attorney says this is the worst idea or this is the best idea, you ultimately have the choice. So knowing that, we hope you make some good decisions. We hope this video was helpful and will get you onto the next best stage of your life and move you past this. And that way you can hopefully move on and not commit any more crimes or potentially even get off crimes that, that did happen. Move on with your future. Thank you.